Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Mistweaver Monks in Shadowlands. While most other healers have seen some significant change to their playstyle from BFA, a lack of class changes and new talents has essentially left Mistweavers behind, with their playstyle remaining much the same in Shadowlands as their BFA counterparts. With that being said, their strengths also remain the same, and so with just a little tuning, Mistweaver monks are very likely to still have their place at the top of the meta in matchups where their strengths shine. In this guide, we'll be covering all the basics to help you get started with your own Mistweaver monks the moment that Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. Then, around the time Season 1 starts, we'll release a refresher guide that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to heal, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. So, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment those guides are out. To get things started, let's take a look at the few changes that Mistweaver Monks did receive in Shadowlands. First, we've seen the addition of three new spells, including the new talent Invoke You Lawn. Although it's likely this won't be used due to its long 3 minute cooldown and because it's mostly built as a big raid CD. Expel Harm has also been made baseline, giving you access to an instant heal along with Touch of Death also returning as a baseline ability. On top of these additions, there's been a handful of adjustments to the spells that you already had. First, the cooldown of Paralysis has been reduced to 30 seconds, which is easily one of the best changes for monks, letting you more frequently assist your team in setting up kills. Leg Sweep has also had its range increased by 1 yard, which is just a small quality of life change. Two of your talents have also seen a change, with Jade Serpent Statue getting its healing increased. However, the channel time has been reduced from 30 seconds to 8 seconds, and Manatee has been taken off the GCD, which is another great quality of life change. Okay, so given that Mistweaver monks have pretty much seen no major changes, it should be no surprise to hear that your playstyle remains much the same as it was in BFA. Your goal will be to stand at max range, avoid CC, and just pump out the heals while rotating Life Cocoon to counter enemy offensives or CC chains. With all of that being said, this definitely puts Mistweaver monks behind the other healers. Their throughput can be considered quite low when you take into consideration how little damage and CC Mistweavers bring. Pairing that fact with the underwhelming spells that Mistweavers have gained access to means that we've ended up with a weaker version of the BFA Monk given the loss of Azerite and Essences. Also, something that we haven't mentioned so far is that you can no longer cancel Aura your role, which is effectively a nerf to your mobility. Altogether, this really leaves Mistweavers in an awkward place, as the combination of their limited toolkit and poor throughput means changes are vital for the class to have a place at the top of Rated Arena. While simple changes like percentage-based buffs to Mistweaver's healing will likely see them return as the kings of healing against Caster Cleaves, a few new additions to their toolkit are necessary if we're going to see Mistweavers at the top once again. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Alright, now that we're caught up on where Mistweaver monks currently stand in Shadowlands, let's go over everything you need to know to get started with your own Mistweaver monk the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins. And we're going to start with your best race. It shouldn't be a surprise that humans continue to be the standout pick for Alliance, given that you're able to play with Relentless while still having a way to break out of stuns, something that no other race can do. This can be crucial when facing classes that have plenty of easy to land and consistent CC for you, usually against mages, warlocks, and hunters. The human spirit is then a great added bonus for the additional secondary stats. But if you do prefer an alternative choice, both Night Elf and Gnome offer some practical use, with Shadow Meld allowing you to avoid incoming CC and Gnome being great for countering a balanced Druid's Root Beam. As for those playing Horde, Orc is by far the best option and is even considered the best race for monks in a rogue heavy meta as you get the stun reduction to survive swaps while still having a Gladiator's Medallion to break out of blind. Next, let's go over each of your talents and discuss what your best ones are and why that's the case. Starting with the level 15 row, Mist Wrap is the superior choice as the healing bonus on Enveloping Mist provides the most meaningful boost to your throughput. Although Chi Wave can be considered against Shadow Priests and Elemental Shamans, as you'll have to deal with plenty of offensive dispels against them. Moving down to the level 25 row, Chi Torpedo is the default pick here for the increased range on your roll, greatly boosting your mobility and making it easier to both get away or quickly push in to land an important paralysis when needed. Tiger's Lust is a great alternative pick when facing comps with strong slows and roots. 
such as survival hunters and DKs, and can even be used to help increase your teammates' mobility. So consider picking this up when playing with a melee teammate. In the level 30 row, while Mana T was previously taken most of the time, the change to bring it off the global CD means that you'll likely never play without it. With that being said, Life Cycle still has its place in matchups where you expect to use Enveloping Mists a lot. The level 35 row sees two great choices in Ring of Peace and Song of Chi Ji, with your selection coming down to the comp you're playing and what your goal is in the matchup. Generally, Ring of Peace will be taken in most situations, as it's both a great offensive and defensive tool that can be used as both a pseudo interrupt and zonal ability. As for Song of Chi Ji, when playing comps with limited CC, this is an excellent tool for being able to CC healers while your team tries to score a kill onto a DPS. Next up in the level 40 row, healing elixirs is the go-to for almost every matchup and will provide a ton of value whenever you take damage and aren't able to freely cast to top yourself. You'll still want to consider picking up Diffuse Magic though when facing Caster Cleaves as a way to easily live through kill attempts on yourself. The penultimate row sees one clear winner, Summon Jade Serpent Statue. Not only does it provide the most healing in this row, but it's the only talent that provides value without needing to be in melee range. And given the current fast pacing of Arena in Shadowlands, you'll want to stay as far away from the action as possible in order to keep yourself and your team alive. And the final row also sees one primary choice in Focused Thunder. Although this entire row doesn't really offer anything super strong, Focused Thunder at least gives you the option to increase your throughput or reduce your mana cost when needed. With your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at which PvP talents you should pick up. To start, a great default build consists of Chrysalis, Counteract Magic, and Zen Focus T. These three talents provide a ton of value with a shorter duration Cocoon via Chrysalis, stronger Hots from Counteract Magic against some casters, and Interrupt Immunity during Zen Focus T. Unlike most other classes though, Monks have access to a ton of useful PvP talents, which means that you'll be swapping talents in and out depending on the matchup constantly. Eminence is a great pick when facing melee cleaves that train you to make it easier to kite and stay alive. Grapple Weapon can help both you and your team stay alive by disarming melee at key points in the game, and it can even be used offensively. Healing Sphere has its place against Shadow Priests and Affliction Warlocks to help deal with their dots without having to actually dispel them yourself. Dome of Mist works well against teams that are frequently offensively dispelling your hots. And Refreshing Breeze helps with pumping out high single target heals if you're struggling to keep your team alive against huge consistent damage. Alright, so you've hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best Covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Venthyr as the best overall Covenant for Mistweaver Monks. While none of the Covenants currently stand out as being superior over the others, the Venthyr class ability for Monks, Fallen Order, is looking to be one of the best, although the long cooldown makes it weaker for longer games. However, given the current fast pacing of Arena, you're likely to get a lot of value out of it in those shorter games. You'll also gain access to the Soulbind ability, Familiar Predicament, which is the sole reason many casters are picking up Venthyr. Alternatively, Kyrian also looks strong for Mistweaver Monks as the Monk ability grants a huge boost to Mastery, your best stat. You also gain a healing vial, which can be vital for keeping yourself alive through strong swaps or just while being trained. Still though, Venthyr is likely going to be your best bet given how strong Fallen Order and the Soulbind ability familiar predicaments are. Okay, we keep mentioning the term Soulbind ability, but what actually are Soulbinds? Well, after selecting your Covenant, you'll unlock Soulbinds, which are essentially skill trees you'll be progressing through as you journey through Shadowlands. If you choose the Venthyr as your Covenant, you'll want to go with Nagia as your Soulbind for competitive PvP as you gain access to the Soulbind ability that we mentioned earlier, Familiar Predicaments. This simply reduces the duration of your lockouts when interrupted, and it should be no surprise how good this is for healers. Next, you'll also need to pick up a bunch of conduits that fit into your Soulbind tree, which are split up into three different categories. Potency, Finesse, and Endurance. Starting with your Potency Conduits, you'll want to pick up your Covenant-specific Conduit, so Imbued Reflections as Venthyr to greatly buff your already strong Fallen Order or Strike with Clarity as Kyrian. Then Resplendent Mist should be your second Potency Conduit for the increased healing from your Mastery. Grounding Breath is then your best Endurance Conduit and greatly helps in efficiently keeping yourself alive. Both Harm Denial and Fortifying Ingredients are decent alternatives, but overall don't provide as much value as Grounding Breath, given that your goal as a Mistweaver Monk is to always get away from damage, which will give you the opportunity to cast and top yourself with Vivifies. 
And as for your finesse conduit, none really stand out as being too great, but lingering numbness at least has the potential to provide some value in niche situations. Alternatively, Swift Transference could also see some play and potentially be a better pick especially if you find yourself often playing with eminence to deal with being trained. So that leaves our recommended build looking like this, with imbued reflections and resplendent mist as your potency conduits, grounding breath as your endurance, and lingering numbness for finesse. The final step you'll still need to take is to pick up your best legendary. We are currently recommending Tier of Mourning as your best option. Given that Mistweavers don't rely on cooldown rotations to output a ton of healing and instead just rely on strong healing spells, Tier of Mourning complements their playstyle really well by providing a massive bonus to Vivify and enveloping Mist healing. The only other legendary that you might want to consider picking up is Escape from Reality in those tricky matchups where you're having to deal with being trained by two melees. Pairing this legendary with the previously mentioned Swift Transference and the PvP talent Eminence gives you a crazy amount of mobility and will make it really hard for melee to stick to you. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Mistweaver Monks in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to know to get started in Season 1, and be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video which will include updates to the information in this guide along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and which your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.